Hey, um, so this is a, this is a little bit different. This is the PS2 adaptation game of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5, Part 5, Vento Oreo. Uh, this only released in Japan. There was a English translation planned. Uh, Capcom, uh, Capcom made this game. They were planning for an English release too. But Prince, <laughs> the musical artist, was like, you can't do that, it's gold experience. So this only released in Japan. Uh, there is a translation, but I don't know if it's done. And it's, it's, if you know the story, it's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be able to keep up with the story. I'll explain stuff if I need to. This up there, that's just a backstory for people who don't know. So, what's going on right now, you might need to know. Well, um, the guy with the red hair is Leaky Eye Luca, who's this guy that pesters Giorno when he's at the, uh, at the airport because he's making money without the consent of the gang, Passione. Uh, so Giorno kills him. <laughs> there you go. Giorno kills him, uh, with like a frog or something, I don't know. This is a, a topical game for me to play right now, because the anime of Vento, Vento Oreo is running right now. Go watch it, it's pretty good. I don't know why they made Giorno's outfit pink, but it's pretty good. Oh, so here's Bruno Bucciarati. He He's here to take down Giorno, because Giorno's took down Leaky Eye Luca. Bucciarati here becomes a, a, a main ally later, but right now he's a he's a minor antagonist. <laughs> Get ready for the most iconic scene in manga history. You don't even need to be able to understand it to to get it. Uh, this game looks really nice too. It emulates the style of the manga really well. I mean, granted, the the PS3 and PS4 JoJo games look a lot better, but like, I mean, that's a given. Do it. Oh yeah, you might recognize the voice of Jono here. Uh, the voice of Jono is the voice of Koichi in the anime. The voice they've given Jono in the anime makes a whole lot more sense than Koichi's voice, though. Do it. Yes! <laughs> That's the Leaky Eye Luca's eye that Bruno has. Yes! Yeah, here's the most iconic scene in history. Do it. Yeah! <laughs> this taste is the taste of a liar. Giorno Giovanna! Bruno Bucciarati. So this game has a system where if you can pull off moves like that were in the manga, um, you get bonus points. But I'm not meticulous, so I'm not gonna go for those. I mean, you. I think you have to get some of them, but um, I'm not gonna go for them. So there's your attack button, square circle. And uh, I don't remember what X does. Oh, right. It's a stand ability. But what I remember, R1, no, I guess I can't do it yet. But R1, I believe, is, yeah, no, L1 is the stand, is activates your stand. Now, I, yeah, R1, R1, get ready for this. This is the most satisfying thing ever. So yeah, when I said that... Secret factors, I believe they're called. When I said some of them you have to get, it's this one. Well, this is one of them, rather. Funky Italian man. All these thoughts growing through his head, right as he gets punched in the face. Yep, secret factor. Can't read that. 
Oh, okay. But, my stand made is back so I can do it again. I guess that was another secret factor. Oh, there's his stand, Sticky Fingers. Now, Sticky Fingers in the English translation, called Zipper... Zipper... Z Zipper Man. It's stupid and I hate it. They could have called it Zippy Fingers. I know he's saying Muda, it's just kind of... In that one voice line, it sounds like... More like Mudder. Alright. I just beat Sticky Fingers. That's basically your main attack. Like... Or Jorno's main attack, rather. You can play as other characters. But, like, that's Jorno's main attack. You kind of just rely on that. Which is fine. I mean, no one really wanted... Like, you, when you go in to a game like this, you're not going in expecting an insane, great quality fighting game. No, it's you're, you're just playing it because you like it. it like, w what I mean by that is you're just going to play it for, like, the fan service. Like... I know this. I, re I read the mongus. I read the mango. I know this scene. Yes, what? That oh, that's saving, isn't it? What? Um. All right. Yeah, there's there's art from the manga in the loading screens. Very nice. I believe this might have been the last game Capcom made when they had the rights to JoJo. The rights went to Bandai Namco after this. And Bandai Namco made the the PS2 Phantom Blood game, which is, um, bad. And then they laid dormant for a while. Then they made All-Star Battle, which is great. And then they made Eyes of Heaven, which is also great. And I think there's a few mobile games as well, but I haven't played any of those. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the iconic Bruno pose, where he's coming out the zipper. I might need to explain stand abilities. John or specific ones. Jorno's is Gold Experience, which is named after the Prince album. Uh, Gold Experience can... Uh, create life, basically. And by that I mean, you can have... Say you've got like a dollar bill, he can turn it into like a butterfly. Which is why he's got the little like ladybug symbols on his suit. Uh, and later he also gains the ability to heal with it, but he doesn't have that right away. And Bucciarati's is Sticky Fingers, which lets him create zippers and travel through them. Uh, and trap other people in zippers. And also, he can, like, come out of existing zippers. It's kind of weird. Here we go. Now we're in a more open environment. We've got to chase him. And then we got to find him. So if... Oh, this is a... Ch oh, blocky looking man. Uh, if you probably would be able to tell, I've only played the- the only time I've played this game before was to test- to like test to see if it worked. Uh, which is a thing I should probably learn to do more because I didn't do that. I think the only other game I did that with was uh, Xenoblade. Uh, um, I forget my point. Alright, yeah. Uh, I mean, I get most of the story beats, because I do know the story of Vento Oreo, but, um, but the game is mostly new to me. I have seen a full playthrough of it, but that was a while ago. This camera is funky. Oh, oh, there he is. There's the Italiano. Oh yes, the classic manga trope. Oh, 
Oh, that's a nice looking Italian. Well, I don't know where he is. I don't know what Giorno said. Maybe I should pull up the manga right now. No, I'm not gonna do that. I have it! I've got all of JoJo parts 1 through 7 on my computer. Don't have part 8, I'm waiting. I'm not gonna read that until after it's over. So I might be waiting a long time for that. Um, but I've got all of parts 1 through 7. I just recently finished reading Steel Ball Run and it's fucking fantastic. Yep, I'm lost. Um, Steel Ball Run's my favorite part. I like. Uh, Johnny is a great. Johnny's got a great character arc. Well, so is Jorno. Oh, not Jorno. Oh, am I. Am I Gyro! I confuse them because they're both Italian. Oh, that. Huh, okay. Yep, I'm totally lost. That was a secret factor. I'm still lost. I'm running out of time. Just gotta take out my anger, whatever. Oh yeah, if you don't know uh, anything about JoJo, uh, a stand? Only a stand user can see a stand. Yes, thank you, Jonah. So, um, that guy I just attacked has no clue what just happened. I should probably have a guide. That would probably be a good idea. Muda, muda, muda. Uh, th that's probably what it's saying. It's probably like trying to be a hint, but because I don't speak the language, I don't get it. Can I knock these down? Uh oh. I can, but uh, it's probably not worth it. I keep missing anyway. So I said this is a more open environment, but it's not that much more open. It's not that much more open, it's kind of smallish. Oh! Alright. Oh, <laughs> Giorno Giovanna! Giorno's one of my favorite JoJo's. He's not my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite's Jolene, even though part 6 as a whole is not as good as other parts. Uh, Jolene herself is my favorite Jojo. Uh, Jono, my other favorite, um, uh, second place, second place behind, uh, Jolene is a tie between Jono and Johnny. Cause I like the archetype Johnny has where he's like, he's c totally selfish, but he's still like doing the right thing really. I like that, um, idea. And Giorno's just, like, he's just Dio, but good. And that's a, that's like an interesting idea. I mean, Dio is a one-note character and not very interesting. But for some reason, adding one more trait to him makes him far more interesting. I mean, I, I don't dislike Dio at all, he's cool. It's just, he's pretty one-note. But I mean, Diego in part seven is basically a Dio done way better. And I say that purely because Dio has, um, Diego has actual character development. Like, Diego goes from, I, uh, Diego goes from a kid who grew up poor to being this, like, man that's hell-bent on getting the money to pay for his, uh, like, or getting money, not to pay for anything, just to get back at the world, really. And then he becomes, after that, after he gets introduced to Valentine, he then becomes this, like, guy with even more intentions, who's like, I'm gonna, if this is bigger than I thought, I'm gonna take advantage of that, and I'm gonna make the president give me what I want. And he wants to become the... The mayor of Manhattan. Uh, and then after that, 
It's massive spoilers of part seven. He's like, hold on, if I can get the entire holy corpse, which is the corpse of uh, Jesus Christ, um, I can get, I can get even bigger than that. I can go even further. So I'm gonna kill President Valentine. Uh, and then he teams up with Hot Pants to go kill Valentine. But they fail, and they both die. But they do buy time for Johnny and Gyro to actually f to get to the point where they can fight him. And uh, Diego's death scene is one of the most climactic, like in the series, in my opinion, because he dies thinking he's won, and then he looks to the right and he sees his legs cut in half. It's a great scene. 